One of the things that data scientists need to do fairly frequently is plot data. It's very helpful to look at data to get a feel for it. And this is actually one of the areas where a Scala-based environment uh, lags behind, for example, Python and R. And a big part of why people who do data science like Python and R is the fact that they have very robust uh, plotting libraries that are broadly used. Uh, in R, the plotting is pretty much built in to the language. Uh, so you can use things like you know, ggplot2. In Python, there is an, an mplotlib. Uh, in Scala, there are some projects, for example, VegasViz, which it, it's intending to be, sorry, the matplotlib for Scala and Spark. And perhaps if you are working in a uh, Jupyter Notebook or something like that, this might be a good option for you. It sits on top of an HTML-based uh, plotting package, and so it produces these plots that are viewed inside of a web browser. And that's great if you want to view things inside of a web browser. Uh, depending upon what you're plotting though, the use of Vega Lite means that the data has to go through a, uh, you know, basically a text format in between and then get plotted up. It's potentially not good for, for very large data sets. Um, also, when I was running Vega recently, because I'm not inside of a web browser, what it does is it uses ScalaFX and then it brings up ScalaFX web browser and I got it to plot one of their simple little examples. This brought up a plot just fine. When I did something a little bit larger trying to plot my own data, it was crashing the VM not because of the Vegas Viz so much as because of the interactions with ScalaFX and having a uh, you know an, an application with ScalaFX here. So while I encourage you to look at Vegas Viz, it is a more mature project. It does have a uh, an SBT repository, and so you can you can play with this. And it's definitely sitting on a very mature project. In the case of Vega Lite, I will not be using it. Scala FX itself does have plotting because Java FX has its own plotting. And so what I want to do in this video is look at uh, plotting our data using ScalaFX plots. So I'm going to take this same application. Actually, let's go ahead and let's create another. It'll be smaller. Um, new object. Uh, we'll call it plot temps. Dot. No, wait. Plot temps for our object name. Okay. And what I'm going to do here is I want to copy out a bit of this code right here that reads in the data. We'll see what issues we have as far as scoping. Uh, I should be able to say temp data dot there and temp data there because remember over in temp data we wrote some kind of smart conversions that give us back a negative value for precipitation um, and snowfall if it's not defined because a lot of the values weren't okay now to run this as a JFX as a as a Scala FX app we need to extends JFX app and I will need to import so I use my handy control shift O here it brings that in and now that we've read in the data let's see control shift F there we go I need to plot it uh, so my problem my main problem with using well actually I have a few problems with using the skull FX plotting but the first one is just that it is reasonably verbose and so I don't think a lot of people doing data science would really want to to use this plotting mechanism but it does have the advantage of being very stable uh, so I create a primary stage basically I'm just writing a, uh, a Scala FX app at this point I create my primary stage I can give my primary stage a title 
what will we call our title here? Uh, about temp plot. And then I need to make a scene, which will be a new scene of, I'm going to go with 500, 500, because of the limited size of the uh, display for, um, for video making. I'm going to import the Scala FX scene, scene. And just to show that this works, I'm going to run this real quick and it popped up outside of your view, but here is the window that popped up. It says temp plot. It has a 500 by 500 scene inside of it. Okay, so now we need to put a plot inside of here. The plot type we're going to use is a scatter chart. Uh, this is actually one of the potential advantages of using Scala FX. So if we go look in the API and I go down to scalafx.scene.chart, you'll see that we have area charts, bar charts, bubbles, uh, pies, scatter. Uh, some of these are kind of linked. There's multiple subtypes of XY chart, including the scatter chart and the, the bubble chart. Um, so, and depending upon what you're doing, you can pick which one of these that uh, you is best fits your, uh, your usage. So, in this case, as I said, I'm just going to use a scatter chart because all I want to do is I want to plot the temperatures against the day of the year. And we expect to see the high temperatures in summer and the low temperatures in winter. In order to make a scatter chart, I need to have axes. So, for example, if I make a plot, is a new scatter chart. If we were to go look in the API, you'd see that scatter chart needs three arguments. It needs an x-axis, a y-axis, and the data. And the data has to be wrapped inside of an observable buffer. So I'm going to make an observable buffer and wrap it around our plot data. We already have something called data. Probably have to do a few imports here. and we don't yet have those variables defined. Once that is happy, I can just set the root of this display equal to the plot, then the plot will be in the window and it will resize itself and grow and shrink with, with the window. Um, if you don't remember, if you, or if you've never worked with ScalaFX, there are two ways of putting things in a, uh, a scene or another uh, grouping node. One is the root and the other is contents. Uh, root you get to set one thing and it takes up the whole space contents. You can put multiple things and you move them around, but they don't automatically resize with the window. So I need to make x-axis, y-axis, and p-data. So the x-axis. Turns out there are two main types of axes. You can define an axis of whatever type you want, but it's generally easiest to work with one of the ones that they've made for you. And so they have, we have our uh, axis here. You'll see that there is a number axis and there is a category axis. So if you're making, for example, bar charts that have a category across the bottom, that would be a category axis. There is also a number axis. And, um, well, I'll just start this off not passing it anything and let it decide how it wants to do stuff. Val y axis is also going to be a number axis. Now the number axis is an axis of number, where number is a super type of all of the different values that can represent numeric values. So now we need to make our p data and that is going to be created around our data, but unfortunately it's a bit more complex than that because what this actually wants is a what's called a data series and that data series has, uh, has data elements inside of it and both of those are defined inside of the XY chart. So if I go to XY charts companion object you'll see there's a class series and there's a class data. The scatter chart can have multiple 
data sets inside of it so you can have multiple series when we make our scatter chart here. We give it an x-axis, a y-axis, and an observable buffer of series. So I can make multiple of these series and each one of these series can contain lots of data points uh, that will be plotted inside of there. So how do I make this happen in the code? Well, I need to make a a series and I need to tell it what type this series is. So I have to tell it that this is a number number series. Otherwise it won't have it won't agree nicely with my axes and will run into problems. I give it a name, so let's just, this is the temperatures. Uh, we could go back to the API and look at what you have to do to build a series. And then I need to give it uh, a, a set of um, data series, or a set of data, which is, like below, created as an observable buffer. And here is where we can place in the values from our map. Yes. So our map, or from, from the data that we have, we're going to map data. And I want to take every element, TD. And this is an observable buffer of the XY chart dot data. So I'm going to create from each TD an XY chart dot data. Once again, I need to tell it the type. And the reason why I have to tell this, because even otherwise I'd get something like ints and doubles, which wouldn't quite agree appropriately with the axes. So I have to, to distinctly specify that this is a number number. And then that is not YX. And then I have to pass this the two values that I want. So for my x-axis, I wanted it to be the day of year. And for my y-axis, I wanted it to be the high temperature. OK. Um, I get the feeling I am missing a parentheses in here. Let's see, an open, two, three. Yep, four opens and only three closes. That's, that's a problem. Okay, and what are we unhappy about here? Overloaded method with alternative, a string, followed by an observable buffer of that cannot be applied to a string and an observable buffer of chart data of array. Yes, so this last thing that we're calling here, remember data.map gives us back an array because data is an array. Observable buffer doesn't like to take arrays. Actually what, what's happening right now is this is making an observable buffer of arrays. That's not what we wanted. So one of the little uh, kind of nuances to the Scala language syntax, if I, turns out that observable buffer is taking a var args argument. So it is a uh, XY chart dot data star. So it will take multiple of them. You can make it take a collection in place of the star, but you have to explicitly tell it and say, I want this collection to be treated not as one element, but as all of the elements that are going through by using this colon underscore uh, star there. And now this compiles and I can run it. And it will read the data. This is actually an advantage for the videos of using a somewhat smaller data set. And then it will start plotting. Um, this has quite a bit of data in it. I believe we have 40,000 data points that are coming through for data here. This is what we've seen from our earlier videos. There we go. And then finally it pops up. Okay. Um, I don't know if I believe those four data, set, data points. Those look like outliers. So 
this shows you how we can do this plotting with the built-in plots of Scala FX. Uh, it works. Okay, it's it's a, a reasonably happy way of doing things. Um, the only so one problem is that because these things are series of of data and observable buffers, it's there's a lot of overhead for each one of these data points. And my own experience is if you get up to about a uh, hundred thousand data points, there's a good chance you will exceed the memory of the uh, Java Virtual Machine, unless you start giving it options to use more memory. But the ScalaFX plotting uses quite a bit of memory. Along with using quite a bit of memory, it's not necessarily all that fast if you have lots of data points. Now, of course, if you have narrowed things down, if we had grouped this by month and we plotted this out for, for months, none of that would be a problem. Okay, So, so that's one of those things that it kind of depends upon what you're doing and how you want to look at your data. Uh, so this is one option for plotting. We'll talk about another one in the next video.